everybody let's talk about designing a more complex typographic poster together and we're going to use uh, Futura as our example okay so this uh, for the benefit of my typography students uh, this is a demo that can help you get started on building your typeface poster and we're going to talk about some layout ideas and some things that we can use inside Illustrator to set up your page. Now this is an 11 by 17 inch document or a tabloid size document that I have created inside Illustrator. And I have a couple sketches here that I'm using to kind of plan ahead and design what my poster could look like. And I just quickly did a sketch thinking about the letter F as the main focal point of my poster and deciding whether or not to go with more of a, a normal horizontal vertical layout or maybe more of a tilted or um, diagonal design. I think in this case, the diagonal design might be a little more interesting. So I can set this up to do that. Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do is set up my page and kind of get going. So let's move a couple more things out of the way so I can get going. So basically, <clears throat> first thing I'm gonna do is put together the, the pieces of my design and then start working on the actual uh, layout and configuration. So the first thing to do is set up some of the pieces. So the F, the big letter F that I'm gonna use for the main part of the design, I wanna get to now. So I'm gonna use the type tool and I'm gonna just tap on my screen and overlap that temporary text and just replace it with the letter F. I wanna make sure that I do that as opposed to drawing a text box. Using text box can be a little wonky inside Illustrator. And so for this situation, I'm gonna avoid text boxes. The reason being that when you use a text box inside Illustrator and then you try to rotate, you don't actually rotate the entire text, you rotate the box and it's separate from the text. And the kind of uh, diagonal design that I'm gonna be working on here with Futura, I wanna be able to manipulate this text as if it were a graphic. So I really don't need a text box. So again, when you use the type tool, just tap once and that inserts text onto your page and you don't have to worry about using a text box. And I'm gonna go ahead and just type out the word Futura. Okay, now I do wanna make sure that the typeface I'm using for this is Futura. And it just so happens to be in the character palette, I can double check that and make sure I'm actually using the correct typeface. Um, I have Futura, the Futura PT typeface family, which I've downloaded. And for this, I wanna use one of the bolder versions because I want the title and the large letter F to be fairly large on my page. So I'm gonna use the heavy version of Futura. I wanna make sure that I have selected the correct typeface for my design. Again, the heavy version. Okay, now I'm gonna to switch to my selection tool and scale up the F and get this, this guy going. I'll zoom out a little bit so I have a little more room to work. Oops, there we go. <laughs> Why aren't we cooperating? There we go. Weird. Okay, something odd is happening. There we go. Okay, I also am gonna go ahead and convert this into an object. So I'm gonna select the, the letter F and under the type menu, I'm gonna use create outlines. So now this becomes a shape and I can manipulate it without worrying about some of the other issues I might run into having it be just text. So now I'm gonna scale it. I'm being careful not to stretch it. I don't want to stretch it. That distorts the actual appearance of the text. 
I want to scale it. And so when I stretch it, I'm holding shift so that it is scaling proportionally. Okay, I haven't quite settled on where I'm gonna put it, but in my little sketch, I had it on the diagonal. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it a little bit until I get it into a position that feels close to what I imagined in my sketch. Okay, notice how things are bleeding off the edge. That's okay, not a big deal. All right, next thing I can do is I can actually take my direct selection tool, my white arrow, and select these two anchor points, and I can actually extend that letter F, being careful to keep those lines parallel with the original lines. I don't wanna distort them too much and stretch the end of the F off the page toward the corner. And I can do the same thing with this part of the letter F. I can grab those two anchor points and stretch and drag them off the page. Don't really care so much that these pieces are gonna go off the edge. Um, when I go to presentation mode, you'll see that it actually cuts off the edge um, because that's a bleed area that gray box around the edge of Illustrator is not going to print. It's just your construction space. So it's okay to go back and forth and uh, let things extend off the edge, especially when you're in the design phase. Okay, so I can fiddle with that some more. In fact, if I want to have a more precise alignment, I can use the grid feature on the view menu, I can turn on the grid and give myself some guidelines to, uh, to set up my page. Now these guidelines uh, are straight up and down. They're not diagonal. Uh, I could also draw some diagonal guides if I needed to, to make some alignments more precise, but uh, the grid might help me, it might not. Depends on the layout you're gonna create with yours. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the grid. Okie dokie. Now let's take that Futura title, scale it, and start deciding what to do with it. Now because these things were not aligned at the same time, I have to be kind of careful as I rotate and make sure that they line up. Some of you may not want to eyeball that. You want, might, might want to make it more precise. It would be possible to draw guides and do that for yourself. Uh, if you wanted to. Futura. All righty. Um, next thing I might do is add a background shape so that I can play around with some other combinations. Now this is a situation where I might actually make a copy of this document. I might make an original and I might make a duplicate and start making different versions of this until I settle on the one that I like the most. Sometimes I do that while I'm working so that I can go back to an original stage. Another way to do it might be to actually use your layers and inside the layer palette, if you open up the layer palette, you could actually duplicate the original layer, hide that original layer and then continue working on your copy. And that way you have multiple layers of different versions inside your Illustrator document, whatever method you wanna use. Uh, another method might be to actually draw a new artboard inside Illustrator and then duplicate your graphics and work on another page, as it were, inside your Illustrator file. So variety of different methods. I find that in design, it's really good to experiment and to make versions and test. And don't just settle on one answer. It's always a good idea to try more. Okay, another part of our typeface poster will be the alphabet. And so this actually might be a situation where I would use a, a text box. So I would draw out my text box on my page 
And then I would need to go through and draw the alphabet. And I could do any combination. In this case, I might try upper and lower case. And then it just becomes a matter of typing out. Can't talk and type at the same time. Typing out all the letters you're going to need. There we go. <laughs> you're going to need for your alphabet. And by using a text box, you're able then to make the space and fit the letters you need. You can make them fit as a column um, and decide how you're going to place them and put them into the background. And maybe in this case, I want to use them as a, uh, a lighter background. And, um, I can tilt this and turn this. Actually, I can't. I have that same problem I talked about before, which is I can't rotate my text box. So what I might do instead is actually um, stretch out the text box and convert these into outlines. So now I have a box of text that I can use uh, to decorate my page with the alphabet. And uh, I'm not being very deliberate or precise in what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of making blocks of letters and testing it out. And to compose my poster, I'm gonna need to do some some design, I'm gonna to need to do some thinking and testing and seeing what works. I might try alternate colors. Um, I suggest working in grayscale. So maybe what I do is I try three values. I tend to like the idea of working with a light, a medium and a dark value. And when working in grayscale, that's gonna help you decide um, where you're gonna use color later on in the future when your design is finished. But by using three levels, a dark, a medium, and then a light, and maybe even a fourth, like white as your last color, you can build a tiered um, color scheme. And by using gray in the beginning, it's easy to figure out the shapes and the way they fit together and the design. Then you can try alternative color uh, settings. You can apply uh, dark, medium, and light colors to your grayscale version and start testing out what that's going to be. So let's say I decided to go with like a, you know, a, a purple burgundy or something, and then uh, I would use my color guide, which I've talked about in a few other videos, to try out maybe a analogous or monochromatic color scheme. And using that color scheme, I could then pick one of the medium tones and then a light tone using a simple swatch to kind of build up a color scheme uh, for my poster design. So that's kind of a brief rundown. I'm not actually gonna go through and finish the poster. I don't actually want to uh, push you one direction or another in your designs, but Hopefully by talking through the process a little bit, you can see how to build up your pieces and then design what you wanna see on your page. Uh, if you get into any trouble spots, uh, you can always just start over. That's the beauty of Illustrator is you can take something, uh, make a copy, duplicate it, cut it out, revise it. Um, it's endless. Nothing is really permanent in Illustrator and that's what makes it really forgiving when you're working on designs. All right, so hope that gives you a little jump start and uh, gets you on your way to finishing up your designs. All right, thanks. See you next time.